Hi! In this tutorial, I will cover the basic usage of Stop Motion Helper version 3.0 for creating animations in Garris mode. In this tutorial, I will not explain how to make proper good-looking animation, rather how to set up the tool and use the functions that it has. After downloading Stop Motion Helper from the workshop, we'll have to set it up before we can actually use it. To do that, we'll have to use Developer Console, which can be enabled in the Settings menu. Then, we have to bind any key on our keyboard to be used with this image. For basic use, we'll need two keys. One to open the menu, and another to play back our animation. To open the menu, I'll use the B key, and so I'll enter Bind B SMH menu in the console. And to play the animation, I'll use the N key, for which I'll enter Bind N SMH playback. With all the keys set up, we will now get to the actual usage of the tool. First of all, press the B key or whatever you have bound to the menu command. This will open up SMH menu, through which we will do majority of our interaction with the recorded keyframes. In it you can notice two boxes with numbers, one of which is frame rate. We will be setting the amount of frames per second for our animation. Common ones are 24, 30 and 60. I mostly use 30 FPS and the frame count. This will determine the amount of frames we will have in our scene. Now let's refresh our memory on how it all worked before. Let's spawn in some ragdoll, like Kleiner. Bring up SMH menu and right click on Kleiner. It will select him to record animation onto. And as you can notice, he also gets outlined with a green halo. Next, pause the ragdoll. After that's done, press the record button, and that will record its current position in a keyframe. That is represented by a block, which will now appear on our timeline. You can manipulate this keyframe by moving it around the timeline by clicking and dragging it with left click, by copying it with middle mouse or control and right click, or delete it by right clicking on it. For the purpose of the tutorial, and me being not creative, let's make Kleiner do a wave. Move the playhead several frames away, pose Kleiner with his hand up. As an example, I also face pose him a little, to show that we also can animate face flexes. Now, hit the record button again, and that will create a new keyframe. Now, if we scrub the timeline between our two keyframes, we can see that Kleiner will move between two poses that we recorded. If we press N or whatever you bound the playback command to, we also will see how the animation plays out. If you move keyframes closer together, the action will be sped up, move them farther away, and the action will happen slower. Also, do note that if you move a keyframe on top of another one, the keyframe that you moved will replace the other one, resulting in the latter being deleted. Whereas having two keyframes is enough to make stuff move, we need a bit more to make a better looking animation. It is possible to record ragdoll poses between other two keyframes, so you will be able to make manual easing or arcing, although I will not cover those concepts for now. With the new SMH update, it is also possible now to select multiple keyframes and manipulate them just like you would with a single frame. Move them around, copy or delete them all. To select multiple keyframes, hold Ctrl and left click on the keyframes you wish to select, or click any of the selected keyframes to unselect them. You can also shift and left click two keyframes to select them and all the keyframes between them. Left clicking on any keyframe will unselect all the selected frames. If you want to animate something else, like another character, all you have to do is spawn them in, select them with a right click with the menu open, and do the whole process of recording their poses again. As you select entities with already recorded keyframes, the timeline in the menu will be updated accordingly. SMH also has automatic easing options. However, I would not recommend using them for animating ragdolls. Because ragdolls have many bones, automatic easing will apply the same easing to all of them, making it look weird. However, you can feel free to use auto easing for static props, which consist of just one bone. To apply that automatic easing, move to the keyframe you want to have easing in or out, and enter a number between 0 and 1 into the ease in or ease out options that appear. The closer the number is to 1, the more easing will be applied, with 0 having no easing at all. There are also more console commands that you can bind that can perform actions for you without a need to open the menu. For instance, a smash record records the currently selected entity's pose basically works the same as pressing the record button in the menu. Smash next and SMH previous will move the current frame forwards or backwards by one frame. You also can save your animation with the save window, which you can access through the save button in the menu. After that, enter a save name in the name text box, press save, and your current animation will be saved. Take note that if you already have a save with the name that you have set, that save will be overridden, so be careful with that. It is also possible to delete saves from this window. You also can bind the SMH quicksave command to any button, which will create a quicksave for your current animation, which will name it quicksave. Useful if you're afraid of losing progress due to sudden demon crashes or whatever. After that, you can quit the game, get back in some other time and load it back. However, for the usual way of loading saves, 
you will need to spawn the entities that were animated with SMH on your own, like Clanger and Brain in this example. To make matters easier, you can use Kirsten's save feature to quickly have access to all the entities in the scene you had made. Now, select the entity you had animated before, click load and let go of the SMH menu. In the load menu, you will see the saves you have made before. Click on the save you want to load and it will create a list of entities you have recorded. Click on the entity that you want to load, make sure that this model matches the entity that you have currently selected and click load. After that's done, when opening the menu you will see that your keyframes are back where they were and if you move the playhead, everything will update to the recorded positions in the timeline. Repeat the load process for all the other entities you had recorded and like that, you have loaded your save. As for rendering your animation, pick the camera angle you want to use, set the amount of frames to place the animation for to be around the amount of animation you have, and use SMH Max GPEG or SMH Max Screenshot Console command, which will screenshot all the frames on your SMH timeline. All the images will be saved in your local Steam Screenshots folder, which you can put in your video editor of choice afterwards. Or you can just use a video recorder like OBS Studio and record the playback. As for the new features, if you don't like SMH timeline starting at zero, you can change it with SMH start at one, one console command. It will just change the way UI shows you the frame count, otherwise everything remains the same. Settings menu now has some more options, so let's see what they're all about. Like before, there's still the freeze all option that will keep all physical bones of recorded entities frozen, even if they weren't frozen when you recorded them. I usually prefer to have this option always on, as I personally don't like having stuff play around when I play back my animations. Localize fist bones. I don't think it really makes any difference whether you have it enabled or not for now. It doesn't have a use yet. Don't animate fist bones. With this option on, SMH will not pose physical bones of ragdolls, but everything else, like face poison or finger poison, will still be animated. Could be useful for people who do puppeteering. Then we have the ghosting options. This will allow you to view previous or next position of your selected entity relative to the current frame. It is also possible to view ghosts of all other recorded entities with Ghost All Entities option. And with SMH Onion Skin 1 console command, you can view ghosts of all keyframes you have, rather than just previous and next ones. You also can set ghost transparency with the transparency slider in the settings menu. Now, as for the newer options, there's a disable twinning option, which will make SMH not twin animation between recorded keyframes. Generally, that can be useful if you want to use the blocking method when making your animation, or make it look like classic stop motion. However, this option will be applied to all recorded entities. Smooth playback. This option will try to make SMH playback run smoother, however it may pose your animation with less accuracy and might be a bit more taxing for your system. I think this setting will be useful for people who primarily record SMH playback with external video recording programs. Enable world keyframes. This option allows SMH to run specific commands from world keyframes. We will get to those later. And as of SMH 3.0, Stop Motion Helper Auto Recorder has been officially integrated. To access it, you have to press the Physics Recorder button in the settings window, which will open the Physics Recorder window. I will get into the actual usage later. And as always, there's also the Help button, which will redirect you to the SMH GitHub tutorial page. As for the major addition of the SMH 3.0, there's now a Properties button in SMH menu. When you have selected an entity with recorded keyframes, click on the Properties button to bring up the Properties window. There, you will be able to see all of the entities in your game that have recorded keyframes, and you can switch between them from there. You also can rename the currently selected entity, that's used for showing its name in the load window, and it can be of use to differentiate between entities that use the same model. You may also notice the timelines window. With this, you'll be able to add separate timelines for various modifiers that SMH can manipulate. You can have up to 10 timelines per entity and assign whatever modifiers you would like but you can have one modifier be shared by multiple timelines. As an example, let's add a timeline to Kleiner and assign just the facial flexes to it. You also can change the keyframe color for different timelines, so it will be easier to tell which is which. Now, once we get out of the properties window and bring up the SMH menu, we will see that we have two timelines on Kleiner. Let's select timeline 2. As you can see, keyframes there may change the color if you did set anything different from standard green, but they will remain in the same spots as timeline 1. We can move them around and even record additional ones as we change face position on Kleiner. As an example, we also can knock them around. Now, as you scrub the timeline, you can notice that Kleiner will still stay in his original weaving animation, whereas his face changes just as we animated it. Therefore, we now can finally separate body animation from the facial one. Now, let's check all the modifiers that we can use with SMH. Non-physical bones. All the bones that can be usually animated with advanced bone tool, which will be stuff like fingers, some heads on Team Fortress 2 characters, and the like. Color. Color for the color tool. 
there. Body group allows you to change body groups. These are generally accessed through the C menu. Model scale. I am unsure which tools manipulate that. But hey, this modifier was an SMH before, so I guess it can be left in. Soft lamps. Animates properties of the soft lamps. Is useless on anything other than soft lamps. Pose parameters. Seems to manipulate pose parameters of animated props, like player models looking to the left or right. Doesn't change animation sequences though. Eye target. Manipulates the eyes of the entities that you can animate with the eye poser. Skin. Allows you to change skins. These are generally accessed through the C menu. Facial flexes. Allows you to animate anything that you can animate with the face poser. Advanced cameras. Animates the properties of the advanced cameras. Is useless on anything other than advanced cameras. Physical bone. Records the position of any physical entity. Generally the things that you can manipulate with the physical. Be it ragdoll bones or physics props. And then animates them. Position and rotation. Basically the same as physical bones. Also works on non-physical objects. If used on physics props, the physical bones modifier will take priority over it, and it doesn't seem to work at all for ragdolls. Advanced lights. Animates properties of the advanced lights. Is useless on anything other than advanced lights. By default, SMH will be recording all the modifiers on one timeline. However, that is not really optimized. I would suggest not to use modifiers that you don't really use for the current animation. Like, if you aren't using color tool or the body group changing stuff, you can just disable it, and then it won't record data from those modifiers at all. When you disable modifiers from a timeline, the data from those modifiers doesn't get deleted, it still persists. If you want to completely get rid of some modifier, like body groups, create a new timeline, add body groups modifier to it, delete keyframes from it with a right click, and that should clear it. In addition, every time you record on a new entity, it will always default to the usual preset with all modifiers on one timeline. However, you can set a custom preset by setting up your preferred timeline settings on some entity, then closing the properties window and entering SMH save preset in your console. Save preset will make it remember the currently used timeline tab and will apply to every entity you will record from now on. However, currently preferred timeline setup is tied to your Steam nickname, so if you change it, it will get reset. To fix it, you can access your timeline settings in Gersnode Gersnode Data SMH settings, find timeline info with your previous name, and change your previous nickname to the current one you use. The Properties window also has a Select World button, which will allow you to access the world keyframes. Click on it, record a keyframe, and get back in the Properties window to check what those can do. As you can see, there are now three text boxes. In one you can enter console commands for the keyframe to execute, like Matt Fulbright 1 or Kill. Probably that will come in handy somehow. As for the other two, these are the key press simulators, which are primarily meant to work with GMOD entities that require specific key presses to be activated, like thrusters, wheels, or advanced particle controllers. There are specific means for every button on the keyboard that this function uses. There will be a whole list of them in this video description and SMH GitHub tutorial page as a reference. With those, you can simulate a key press on a certain keyframe and then release it on another one. Do note that you can't press and release a key in one frame that after pressing a key, you have to release it, before pressing it again. There's also a new feature in the load menu, the Spawn button. To use it, select the save from the left column and click Spawn button, which will cause load menu to close. Open SMH menu again, and you will see a new Spawn window to the left of it. In the Spawn menu, you can now select an entity from the save to Spawn from the right column, and you will see its ghost appear in the position of its first keyframe. Clicking on the Spawn button will spawn that entity and apply all the keyframes from the save onto it, although it will not apply anything other than SMH data, so it will not spawn bone merged props or materials. However, for the spawning to work properly, it will need physics bone or position and rotation modifiers to be recorded on the entities that you are spawning in. It is also possible to enable offset for spawned entities by checking the Enable Offset checkbox, which will allow us to move the ghost of an entity we want to spawn to our view. However, it needs some reference point to spawn from, for which you can use any other entity from the save, which we can select from the left column in the spawn menu. With this option, it is not possible to move whole saves to other maps, or even spawn several entities with the same animation in different places. Ragdolls behave weirdly with the ghost preview because they ignore position and rotation modifier, but upon spawning they should work as expected. So, if you want to use the spawn offset, I would suggest to have some sort of dummy fix prop somewhere to act as a reference point for the offsetting. You also can use sliders in the spawn menu to reposition your spawn offsets. 
Back to the physics recorder. When you open it, inside there will be three sliders for customizing the physics recorder. Amount of frames you would like to record, interval between recorded frames, and delay before starting the physics recording. There are also three buttons. The first is Select Entity, which will add the currently selected entity and its timeline to be recorded with the physics recorder. Pressing this button when the selected entity was already selected for physics recorder will unselect it. Clear all selected will unselect all the entities you've selected for the physics recorder. Lastly, Toggle Record will start or stop physics recording. Do note that your currently selected entity and timeline will also be selected for recording. As long as physics recorder is recording, you will not be able to select entities with SMH. Once done, physics recorder will send a message in your chat window that it has stopped recording, and then you will be able to use SMH as usual again. And that concludes the Stop Motion Helper version 3.0 tutorial. As a shameless promotion, if you are interested in making Gearsmod animations and are somewhat experienced with it, there's a Gearsmod Animation Workshop Discord server, which is dedicated to help people improve their Gearsmod animations with feedback and tips on their videos. You can find a link to it in the pinned comment under this video, along with some more information about SMH that I might have not covered in this video.